I want to talk to you about splitting firewood. We have been heating our house exclusively with firewood when we are home. When we travel, we do have propane, but as long as we're home or if we're just gone for several hours of the day, we have a fire going before we take off and uh, we come home to a nice warm house. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. If you end up liking this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications, share comment down in the comment section. Heating with wood has all kinds of benefits. Obviously it's a lot of work unless you just pay for the wood and throw it in yourself, you know, uh, that that's easier. But when you actually go through the work of splitting it, I've done all the splitting with a, an ax or a maul mainly with a maul. I just found find that so much easier. You know, the axe obviously is very light and easier to swing, but the weight of the maul, to some degree, you can almost just let it fall down. I mean, you, you do push forward with some thrust, but using a maul with that eight pound head makes such a big difference. And um, I want to share with you a little bit about how I do it. Now, I'm not the first, I'm not the last. I'm sure there'll be all kinds of other, uh, you know, opinions out there. And that's great. Love to hear what you have to say, how you do it. Um, I have been doing it exclusively, you know, you know, with the chainsaw felling the trees and then, you know, cutting them up into rounds. And then, like I said, using the, mainly the maul, more so than the axe. You always feel good after doing it. You you can immediately see the result of your labor. I mean, you can see the pile of wood that you've just cut, you stack it up. It's There's something very fulfilling about that. And there's something nice about just knowing that you have the freedom of the electricity goes out, you don't have enough money for propane, whatever it is, you can still keep your house warm. I'll be using the eight pound Fiskars splitting mall. Now there's a few things you wanna think about when you are splitting a log. Uh, typically, you know, you just, take your axe, you take your maul, I'll be using an eight pound maul, and you just start swinging. But if you want the best chance at getting it through, number one, you want a piece of cord wood that doesn't have any knots in it. When they have knots in it, it makes it much harder. I mean, almost none of my wood seems to have no knots in it. So I just gotta swing and swing. This one even has kind of a knot here. It doesn't look terrible, but instead of just hitting any which way, if you actually look where there's an already a, a crack that has begun to grow on this particular piece of cordwood right on its face, if I hit right here, I probably have the least likely chance of having it split either on the first hit or even on maybe multiple hits. But if I hit here, I have a much better chance or, or over here. I mean, you could even pick, pick here, but picking the most defined seam on your log is going to give you, or on your piece of cordwood, is going to give you your best chance at actually splitting it, or simply, even if it does take more than one swing, it's at least probably going to be the least amount that you could do. Often people, when they're doing it, they just swing and try to hit it kind of dead center. You know, they just, just try to hit it here, and you can do that, but if it's, if it's, easy to get through that's not going to be a problem but if you got some some strong wood like this black oak and white oak hitting it dead center is less likely to kind of pierce it through and also it's better not to hit it kind of on an angle like this where you're just hitting one of your tips uh, either here or here because it's just not going to have the same impact so trying to get it dead center and not not so much dead center the more on this side but getting when i say dead center i'm talking about at this point at this point just getting the axe as straight as possible and one of the aspects that helps you do that is by bending your knees when you when you first come down. So bending right as you come down is, you know, gonna be more likely to do that. And when they are all twisted, I don't know if I have any, it does, I don't, don't look like I have any twisted wood here, but some of the wood as it grows, it kind of just has a twist to it. And when you hit that wood, it, it can be very, what I call stringy. And if you try to break it apart, there's just all these strings that are connecting it together. One of the things you can do in those situations is you can try to, uh, I think they call it uh, glazing. That might not be the word, but uh, basically just glancing. Yes, you glance it. You kind of hit the side. Uh, instead of hitting more toward the center, you try to knock off the sides. The difficulty with that is with a swing like that, you can 
if you glance it, it can be more likely to come swinging off and can hit you in the foot, hit you in the leg. And that's why some uh, steel-toed boots can be a, a good option. Now, something to think about when it comes to safety. I normally wear gloves. I mean, you don't have to. If you got, you know, your hands are calloused enough, you may be just fine. But if you don't do it all the time, gloves help out. But some of the things to think about. Now, this is a, I think this is a 36-inch handle. And when they're 36, you don't have as much likelihood of swinging and having it come back down because it would hit the ground probably before it hits me. And so, but if you're swinging with something like a 32-inch, 33-inch, you may actually have it where you're more prone. If you, if you miss, you know, you could actually come down and you could hit yourself in the leg. And that's one of the reasons why it's generally wise to spread your legs apart, at least shoulder width, maybe even a little bit more than shoulder width apart. And trying to, too much kind of angled swings can make it more likely that you're gonna come down on your own leg. And doing that, I mean, it can be, obviously, you're gonna dig in if you do something, even, even just a slight drop, even you can drop it from here and you can pierce through a kind of a rubber shoe. And so that's something to really, really think about. You wanna be safe out here. And so we'll give it a go. Now you have the option, I'm doing it on a tree stump here, which obviously there's no give at that point. I often do actually do it on the ground and I don't have a lot of rocks. I don't notice too much damage to the mall. And so it doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. I'm sure it's probably better to do it this way, but having it on a stump does impact it. There's another technique that some people really, really seem to like. And that has to do with when you're coming down, I don't need to do it because this wood doesn't really give me any trouble. And with this mall, this eight pound mall, it's just, it's splitting through it like butter. But often what people like to do is when they're coming down, right at the end, they give a little, a little twist. And that little twist can seem to kind of pop the wood off. And instead of it getting, you know, stuck in the wood, when you have certain wood that isn't easy to go through, you know, you get it stuck and then you got to wrestle it out of there. And that little twist right at the end can actually help just snap it off. And, you know, what it comes down to is, like I said, everybody's got their own ideas. Some people say, oh, this is the way you have to do it. And hey, if that works for you, do it. And if uh, something works for somebody else, you know, give that a try. There are multiple ways to, uh, as they say, skin a cat. Uh, I don't know why people would have any desire to skin a cat, but I don't know where that saying came from. I guess maybe they used to use the strings on an in instrument. Uh, I guess that's what they were made out of. Now this one, this is another thing to think about. This one does have, you can see a knot here. And if I have a knot on a tree, I wanna come, so the knots, the knot is right here. I will probably come, I don't want to go straight through that knot. If I, if I try going straight through that knot, it's going to be trouble. So I would rather, uh, you can see it here, the knot's on, on this side, just away from me. I'd like to come at an angle away from it. That will help me hopefully better be able to get it through. But even though this isn't, this is a relatively small piece, probably only eight inches wide, whenever they have a knot, it can make such a, a difference in the way that you split your wood. So let's, well, I guess that one still went pretty well. But often, I'm gonna be honest with you, this, this wood is splitting better than uh, it almost ever splits on my property. It seems that most of the wood I have is quite knotty and some of, some of it is very, uh, like I said, it's stringy, it's twisted. Let's see this one here. Here's another one with a knot. I don't know if you can you can see the knot there, but this is something to think about. Once again, I wouldn't want to come straight through the knot because there's there's all this wood wrapped around the knot and it just gets very it's very strong at that point. So instead I will turn it and try to kind of just avoid it and we'll see we'll see how that goes. All right, this one's probably this one's a bit bigger. 
So this one's probably 14 inches around. We'll see how this goes. Something else to consider when you're splitting your firewood. When you start off, you might be holding on so tight, you're kind of overworking your forearms or, and then you kind of wear out your forearms or you're swinging so hard down that you begin to hurt your upper back muscles or, or even lower back for that matter. You don't need to often actually put so much force into it. You swing and you're getting that velocity. And as you do, you can actually kind of just let it go into it. Don't feel like you have to push it into it as much as you do have to get the, as much as you have to get the swing going in the first place. Once you have that swing going, kind of let it just fall into it and, and do the work itself rather than you doing all the work. And you're less likely to hurt some of those muscles there. Another thing to consider is when you're, when you're doing your swing, this one here actually does have some knots, so this is a little bit more of a difficult one potentially. But when you're doing this, instead of, instead of thinking of just hitting the top log, actually imagine, imagine that you're trying to hit the log below. And the reason I say that is if you do that, especially if you have a shorter handle, it's gonna be less liable, because if you're, if you're focused on hitting the log below it, you're less likely to swing all the way past the log if you miss it and come back and uh, hit your shin or your foot or something like that. So consider doing that, that mentality, especially have, if you have a shorter one. Like I said, with a 36 incher, I have very, very little worry that it's going to, that it's gonna end up coming through. I mean, it's just too long. It's gonna hit that, that one before it ever hits me, which, which is good news. And actually, I would, for, for most people, if you can handle it, getting a getting a 36 incher, uh, I heard somebody say it. I think it's a great idea. Starting off with a 36 incher is probably safest, uh, you know, because you're going to be less likely to hit yourself. Now, it is true too. I'm swinging an eight pound, but I don't even, to be honest, I don't feel like I'm working all that much. Well. Partly because you're thinking because you're talking too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I'm not normally talking while I'm splitting my my firewood. But there, you you can, like I said, you can get into the swing of it so that it's really, really not that hard. And and especially where you, you don't feel like you have to overdo it. You just work at a good tempo. A friend of mine was in Africa and he was working on a farm with some folks and he was, he's from Europe. And he said, man, I thought they weren't working hard enough. So I was working on the farm hard, hard, fast, fast. And he said about, you know, halfway through the day, he ran, he ran out of steam and he couldn't work anymore. And they, they could just keep on going. And so getting a good kind of a rhythm going where it's not too hard, but it's, you know, not too easy either is, is just a great way to do it. Now, I probably just in the time of recording this video probably have about a day's worth of wood and obviously it's nice to get more than a day's worth of wood but you can see that in a short amount of time you might be thinking that was kind of a long amount of time uh it would have gone faster if i weren't talking but you get the idea you can get a good bit done with an axe or with a mull now, obviously, there are other options out there. There's the tire method. I do use the tire method. These, these pieces are larger, and I couldn't really fit too many of them in a tire, so it wouldn't have been all that beneficial. If you have smaller ones, the tire method works great, where you, where you line up several of them, you know, fill up a tire, and then when you cut them, when you split them, rather, they, they don't fall over, and so you don't have to keep picking them up. So that's one method. The other method is where you actually take a bungee cord and you wrap it around there, and, and that holds it up. That's another good method, too. And so these are some just simple, things nothing revolutionary this is just what I do just giving you a little bit of my personal experience here on the homestead how we hit it heat our house but it will be changing soon and I'll do it I will still be heating with firewood but I'll show you uh, on one of the upcoming videos why I'll be doing less of the the, the you know mall work and more of something else but if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, uh, share any comments down below. It really helps me out. Comments are actually very beneficial. So please share something down below. God bless and have a fantastic day.